My name is Thais Gibson and I'm the owner and founder of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video and today I want to talk a little bit about passive aggression and the dismissive avoidant attachment style. So this is actually a request I've been getting from a great number of people. Um, so obviously some, some sort of pattern correlation people are picking up on. And so I wanted to go into this in a little more detail. Um, before I get started, I just also want to let you know that we're offering earlier bird prices on all of our upcoming online courses. We've got a ton that we're launching towards the end of the summer on attachment styles, reprogramming, all kinds of amazing different um, tools, resources, workbooks, everything will be included in there. So if you're interested in reserving your early bird price now, please visit the website and go to courses and under the transformational course um, button, you can actually go enter your email, the courses you want to reserve early bird pricing for, and we'll have that all set up for you by the time the course is launched. Um, so it's 25% off and, and the courses are super affordable because we're trying to make this material really available to everybody. So, um, Let's go into the material for today. So out of all the attachment styles, um, the dismissive avoidant does tend to be the most passive aggressive as a general rule. And I want to talk about why and how to sort of understand the root causes of this and then how to actually create transformation by understanding the subconscious components that are really contributing to this behavior in the first place. So first and foremost, um, and, and something else that's really interesting here too actually is that passive aggression tends to trigger different attachment styles more than others. Um, but I'll go into that in a little bit. So, so why um, is the dismissive avoidant passive aggressive at times? Well, if you look back in the dismissive avoidance history, there tends to be a great deal of emotional neglect or some form of emotional deprivation for, for a point in time in childhood. And so the output of that or the sort of net result of that is that this attachment style, this individual, tends to make negative associations to their emotions in the first place. It's like if they have these emotions and they try to express them to a caregiver and those are met with rejection or a sort of dismissal or they're unnoticed or ignored, obviously this individual starts building negative associations to their own emotions. And so, you know, if we become really afraid of or disconnected from our feelings because they don't feel good, obviously we'll start to sort of repress altogether. And often the dismissive avoidant will have a situation pop up that they experience and they won't even know in real time exactly what their emotions are in regards to the situation. Often they won't even process the situation completely. It'll just be internalized and repressed or they'll start to feel some sort of way but they don't feel safe expressing around what the situation is that's actually bothering them. Now, this won't be something that happens all the time, but it's definitely something that's a little bit in the patterning. So for example, let's say the dismissive avoidant and an anxious attachment style partner are in some sort of conflict or argument. The dismissive avoidant may not even recognize that they're being so bothered or upset by this conflict or argument until after the fact. They might realize later, hey, this is actually what really bothered me. And sometimes it takes them a little while to process. And so then they'll often, and I hear this from people all the time, they'll often say things like, oh, you know, when I finally realized what I was feeling about it, the time had passed, it wasn't really time to express any longer, I felt silly going back and bringing it up. And this really relates to their patterns. Like, if they didn't feel safe expressing their emotions at all, they're definitely not gonna feel safe expressing their emotions related to what's actually upsetting them about an experience. So it's even a bit of a subconscious coping mechanism and form of like safety and protection to express their emotions about something else totally unrelated to whatever that argument might have been or problem might have been because it's like they don't actually have as much of a chance of their emotions being rejected about what they actually care about. So if they've got all these negative associations built in because at some point in childhood, you know, they were trying to express their feelings and they got rejected, ignored, dismissed, then they feel as a general rule like, okay, my emotions aren't safe to be expressed very much at all. And hence, the passive aggression becomes a sort of coping mechanism or tool for them to still express emotionally, but obviously there, there are pretty dramatic downsides to this. So here is here are some tools that you can use if this is you or if this is a loved one um, that you care about. Number one, if you see this person um, 
exhibiting passive aggressive behavior or expressing their emotions seemingly out of the blue that are pretty intense about something that seems very random or unrelated to anything that's been going on. You can ask them, or if this is you, you can ask yourself, what am I actually upset about? And it sounds, you know, silly and sort of straightforward, but this is a really anchoring question that's actually getting you in touch with your emotions. And the next question you can ask yourself, step two, is it, are these emotions that I'm feeling some sort of previous buildup from recently related experiences or from recent experiences that I've had over the past few days? And this is something really important because this sort of brings you backwards into yourself and, and it's a step towards emotionally processing. Step three, you really want to ask yourself, what emotions am I actually feeling? And you want to be able to label the emotions that you're feeling. So you might feel anger, irritation, frustration, sadness, um, you know, whatever those emotions are, you want to start familiarizing yourself with your emotions. If you've been dissociated or disconnected from your emotions for an extremely long period of time, you know, the only step to really get back in touch there and to start noticing your feelings in real time is to start familiarizing yourself consciously and intentionally. And this means getting in touch with what emotions do I feel most often? What emotions am I experiencing on a regular basis? Um, it's, it can be extremely valuable to keep a feelings journal, like at the end of your day to actually go back and just you know reflect on your day and, and what emotions you felt and what you'll see is that we all experience emotions and patterns some people will struggle with feelings of loneliness and anxious anxiety and panic and other people will struggle with feeling trapped or helpless or powerless and we tend to actually have these predominant emotional patterns that are impacting each of us individually and it's part of our subconscious programming to a certain degree um, even so much so that our subconscious is on some level trying to maintain these negative emotional patterns because when they've been associated with challenging times in our life in our life but we survive those times your subconscious actually builds positive associations to the negative emotions because it goes well that was a really hard time but we survived so obviously this patterning is working so we want to start familiarizing ourselves with these patterns of feelings so that we can start recognizing them more quickly in real time. So we, when we've already locked that awareness in ahead of time, it's sort of like, you know, the analogy I would think of is if you're trying to find your way around some room in, in the dark um, to find your keys or some sort of belonging, you know, if you go in and you're just in the dark the entire time, it's going to be next to impossible. But if you go in, you turn on the lights, you see where your keys are, and then you turn the lights off and then go try to find your keys, you've got a much greater chance. And the same thing happens if we reflect on our emotions ahead of time. It's sort of like we've brought the light of our conscious awareness into our subconscious patterning ahead of time. So we're way more likely to find what's going on as these processes or patterns start to emerge. Um, so going back to those questions, A, what am I actually upset about? B, is there some sort of previous buildup that's been happening over the past few days, you know, with sort of the last time that I was triggered or bothered or upset about something? C, what specific emotions am I feeling? And you can go to the Personal Development School website and under the blog, you'll actually see um, where it's feelings and needs, you'll see a list of emotions and a list of needs that are um, that can sort of help you get started with this process. And lastly, you want to fill in the blanks like this. I felt blank, and you want to insert an emotion when blank happens. So you're sort of connecting the feeling to something that bothered or upset you. And then you want to insert an I need blank and you want to fill in the needs so you can definitely use that worksheet on the personal development school website to get you connected and, and just starting to process some of these things and I also highly recommend when you go through that list of needs um, to reflect on the needs that are most important to you so to pick sort of the top 10 or 12 and what you're doing again is you're making these needs conscious in advance which means you're much more likely to recognize them in real time and this is a really important way to get back in touch with your feelings and needs to get back rooted in yourself in your body connected to what's going on internally in real time and you have a much greater chance at communicating more effectively, processing your emotions more effectively and being more in charge of your emotional state. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you're getting a lot of value out of these videos, please like them, share them, subscribe to our channel and um, feel free to reach out to me with any inquiries um, that you have below and my email is listed at the bottom of this video. Thank you so much.